Today we're going to have a look at the Orbex rendition of Alderney, as it may have looked in the 1940s. It is one of the more recent additions to the Orbex stable, and Alderney is one of the Channel Islands sitting just off the coast of France. Here we're looking at um, Flight Simulator X, Steam Edition, and particularly the BF-108 by Classic Hangars. And we're seeing Alderney in the basic configuration, without any alterations at all. Alderney is the northernmost of the inhabited Channel Islands. It is three miles long, one and a half miles wide, and the area is three square miles, making it the third largest island in the Channel Islands. It is around 10 miles from the west of Le Havre, uh, 20 miles from the northeast of Guernsey, and 60 miles from the south coast of Great Britain. In June 1940, the entire population of Alderney, which was about 1,500 residents, were evacuated. Most went on the official evacuation boats sent from mainland Britain, but some, however, decided to make their own way, mostly by Guernsey, but due to the impending occupation, many found themselves unable to leave and were forced to stay on Guernsey for the duration of the war. The Germans arrived to a deserted island and began to follow their orders to fortify Alderney as part of Hitler's Atlantic War. Construction of Alderney Airport began in 1935 and to this day it's still fairly basic. So when I saw Horbeck's uh, Alderney Airport I thought that it may lend itself to being developed into a Luftwaffe base as in the 1940s. So that's what I've, I've attempted to do here. So we're seeing the original Alderney Airport a la Orbex and what you'll see shortly is some developments fictitious developments that I've added on to portray it as a Luftwaffe base. I used AI Flight Planner to create the moving traffic and AFX to develop the airport um, parking and taxiways. These screens show the before and after situations. I found that the AI aircraft would taxi to the ends of the runways but would not take off and that puzzled me for quite some time. I eventually figured out that it was because nodes had been placed in the middle of the runways, effectively cutting the runways into small sections and the AI aircraft simply couldn't take off in the small sections. So the fix was to delete the nodes and then create a new taxiway node for the full length of the runways and that fixed the problem and the aircraft could take off. All new scenery was created in Instant Scenery 3 but it had to be developed in prepared version 3 which is 32-bit and then transferred to um, prepared version 4 which is 64-bit. And as you can see the Beagle um, files that were created work fine in version 4. Here we're using Orbex's Bob to wander around the airfield and visit the new scenery and check out what it looks like.
This ME109 is the Spanish built version of the Messerschmitt uh, called the Bouchon. As you can see, it's got a different nose shape to your standard ME109. Then we've got some Junkers 52 transport aircraft. And as we move down the flight line, some more Bouchons. These are all John Young AI aircraft, which work very well in P3D V4. Back to the ME-108 Typhoon, which in theory should not work in P3D version 4. However, you can manipulate the texture files uh, in order to get them working within P3D v4. And as you can see, it works pretty well. This is just showing you where some of those files should be located. The ME-108 is a beautiful aircraft, and it flies like a dream in prepared. It was the direct um, predecessor to the Messerschmitt 109. And you can see a lot of the characteristics um, in the 108. The um, wing shape, the tail shape, and the undercarriage attached to the fuselage. Very narrow undercarriage, although in the 108 it is um, better wider than the, in the 109. So here we've got the Messerschmitt 109 in the K version. This particular one is not supposed to work in prepared version 4, but you can manipulate it so that it uh, eventually does work. You have to load it to a fake um, folder and then transfer the files into the prepared uh, area. The 109 is an absolute pig to fly, to take off and to land.
very unforgiving, very difficult to master. However, it is a very beautiful aircraft. And if you put the time in, it is very worthwhile. The flight replica 109s are very difficult to start. They're most reluctant. Follow all the procedures, all the checklists, and they just will not start. Maybe 5% of the time the thing will actually fire up. So I eventually found that um, there was one trick you could use, and that was loading up a different aircraft that was already running, and then switching to the flight replica 109. You had to be very quick in order to turn the magnetos on, and then press Control e and 80% of the time that would work, the thing would fire up. Very frustrating. Now we'll have a look at the fairly recent Heinkel 111 from Aeroplane Heaven. Very nice model. This green lever controls the hydraulic lock, which has to be unlocked in order to operate the flaps and the landing gear. Developed in 1934, the Heinkel 111 is perhaps the best recognised German bomber due to the distinctive greenhouse nose of later versions. The Heinkel was constantly upgraded and modified but became obsolete during the latter part of the war. Manufacture of the HE 111 ceased in September 1944, at which point piston engine bomber production was largely halted in favour of fighter aircraft.
Hope you enjoyed that and see you next time.